Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Um, I've got this IBM Net Vista. It's a MT oh, M slash T 6790-11A. I believe an M41 model. Um, this machine was given to me along with uh, another machine um, that was on the channel a long time ago and that was the HP Vectra. Uh, one of the f one of the earlier videos on my channel but yeah um, this one here has a problem um, I believe it's a problem that affects a lot of machines around this era uh, especially from like the very very late 90s um, through to the late 2010s maybe earlier uh, I think it's got a capacitor problem um, so what we need to do is diagnose it and make sure that you know I'll try and see if there's anything else causing a, a non burning issue um, and then try an attempted repair um, so yeah I've got some tools that you might need um, and yeah let's have a look and see why I think this might be a capacitor problem Right, time to get into the real meat and potatoes as they call it. We're going to open up the machine, it's pretty easy, there's just two buttons on the side and the front cover just tilts off the front. Very handy indeed, makes getting into it pretty easy. These are the offending caps I think are the problem next to the yellow ones. I'm going to replace quite a lot of them actually just because a lot of them will be dying. If some of them already are, um, you know, it's good to try and do a few of them. And the machine has this ability to clip the drives in there with those black clips. Uh, so I'm going to try a non-good power supply and then um, I try to unplug a lot of the accessories in the machine just to rule anything out. Um, and when you power it on, um, the machine powers up um, but it doesn't post. And there's no activity on the caps lock light. Um, or numlock light, um, good indicators that if there's a video issue that the machine's still doing something. Um, so next I'm going to try one of these handy postcards. Uh, what it will do is it will just read out any codes um, that have been executed by the CMOS or BIOS um, as it's posting. Um, but when you power this one on, it doesn't appear to be doing anything. So it normally means it's pretty Coomrid or toast or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, so it's not doing anything. Um, so at this point, it's resetting the CMOS, trying different memory or non good memory in different slots um, and things like that. Um, but yeah, still no luck, which is pretty typical of a machine um, with these sorts of issues where it just won't boot up. Um, I did forget to plug in the auxiliary 12 volt supply to the CPU, so I redid my testing with that plugged in just in case anyone spotted that in the video i mean short of replacing the cpu you know it's yeah it's pretty dead uh, so at this point i thought it might be a good idea to check out the power supply and i did that because these power supplies have a pretty high failure rate um especially from this era i mean the capacitors in these things as well you know they're subject to the same unreliability um, I don't recommend opening up a power supply, just have to put that out there, but this one's been off for months and months and months, so I'm not worried about getting a shock. But inside, apart from being uh, filled with human um, skin, um, and God knows what else, um, it actually um, looks alright, but I'm still going to replace a bunch of the smaller capacitors, uh, mainly those green ones and a few of the black ones, um, just cause, because why not? Um, after a few weeks, my parts did arrive. Uh, where I live, I have to order everything in. Um, there's no shops, which makes doing repairs like this um, a little bit harder. Um, but that's okay. I got there in the end. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just strip the computer down so I can take the motherboard out and um, prepare for the recapping. Which is pretty exciting because I haven't actually repaired or recapped a motherboard before. So I'm going to be learning some skills along the way, um, which should be good for me and probably horrible to watch for you guys.
Okay. This should just slide out. Integrated IO shield. And there's our board. Okay, so I did um, mess up. I forgot to order the yellow ones. Um, so what we'll do is let's just carry on and do some of these. I think I'll start with the easy ones just because they are easier to get at. Well, it's um, pretty much at this point I realized that doing um, double layer boards like this are actually quite challenging. Um, so the way the solder sticks to both sides of the board makes it quite hard to clear the vias or, or holes. Um, the techniques I was using weren't very good. Uh, I guess this was why I wanted to do this, um, is to learn. Um, but you'll see later on that I actually, well, I read a few tutorials and watched a few videos and um, ended up getting a pretty... Um, good system in place um, which I'll talk about in a moment but yeah if you're wondering why there wasn't much footage of this um, it's because I was spending you know it took me like 20 minutes to do one capacitor <laughs> because of how terrible it was uh, to remove but yeah I guess it's a part of the learning experience okay so part of the technique I learned was um, I put a little bit of fresh solder onto the um, end of the pins. Uh, this is to, um, you know, help with the leaded free stuff. Um, start with a very fresh solder braid and a little bit of solder on your iron um, and work that into around the um, leg of the old capacitor. Um, this will help wick the solder from the joint into the um, braid. And then of course just um, break the connection free of your fingernail or a pair of pliers that's left. Um, yeah, and then it made removing and reinstalling the new ones, um, oh sorry, made removing the old one easy, which is actually the part I was struggling with, is clearing off the old um, solder um, through the holes so I could get the new um, parts through. It just made it a lot, um, the process a lot harder um, single-sided boards are a lot easier um, I had a much better luck with the power supply but um, yeah definitely learned um, some new skills along the way of um, getting those in I'm not re I'm not an expert at all of course um, and sort of self-taught you know how to solder um, but yeah a bit of practice um, I actually got through the uh, last eight of the capacitors I was doing um, at an alright pace, I wouldn't say an expert, but I didn't damage any traces or anything, which was what I was worried about. Um, and yeah, I'm, I can actually look at the job and all the repairs after I clean the board up, of course, and I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. Um, yeah, they, they're good, not no cold joints or anything. You can see here the um, motherboard's all done, uh, all of them except the yellow ones with the larger caps. I don't know why I didn't order the yellow ones, but... Um, I guess maybe I thought they looked alright, or I just forgot. Uh, moving on to the power supply, it was a lot easier. Um, the board I think was more single sided, yeah single sided board. So it meant um, the solder was only on one side of it, of the board, so it meant clearing the joints was a lot easier. Like, a really a lot easier. I probably should have started with this, um, to sort of get my bearings and that how you it's how you learn, I guess, is by trying and failing. So, yeah, using the wick, um, which I went through a bit of it and burnt my fingers a fair bit, but it soaked right in, which was quite nice. Um, it made it a lot easier to repair the parts, but yeah, good stuff. Um, after sort of recapping the power supply, um, it's time to reassemble the machine. Uh, so, the motherboard goes back in, and of course, all the bits that go with it. Um, yeah, not a whole lot really to do, just sort of putting it back together really and we'll test it out and see what happens and hopefully it doesn't explode. Uh, 
Uh, thankfully, this machine's pretty easy to work on, so yeah, it made it a lot quicker to reassemble. All right, big moment. Power it on and see what it does. Sweet. It um, didn't explode, which is good. I was worried I'd get the polarity wrong on one of the caps or something, but um, we'll take it inside. Um, you can see here it's posted, which is fantastic. Um, I actually have uh, the machine up and running now, and we'll go into the BIOS and um, we'll check out the specs of the machine, uh, which is a Pentium 4, 1.16 gigahertz, 256 megabytes of RAM, 40 gigabyte hard drive, and I think it's a Volanta, I think 16. I think that's how you pronounce it. The machine um, had Windows XP on it, um, which was really slow after I cracked the password. So, uh, yeah, fresh install Windows 98, um, which, to be honest, um, I mean, it says on the sticker for ME or Windows 2000, but eh, I'll put 98 on there so we can try some DOS games and things out. Uh, thankfully you can still get the drivers online um, which made it a lot easier to uh, get the machine up and going so you don't have to go and track drivers down and things like that um, so a nice fresh clean copy of Windows 98 was installed um, next um, now that I know the machine is working um, it's time to do the thermal paste um, just because early Pentium 4s or most Pentium 4s run quite warm so it's a good idea to uh, change the paste, or in this case the thick sticker or whatever was left on there. Um, I couldn't get all of it off, but a fresh um, coating of thermal paste um, never goes amiss. And I thought I'd do the oil on the fan bearings because it was getting a bit noisy. And uh, to be honest, it didn't really help. <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, lastly, a fresh CMOS battery, because this one didn't have one. Um, I took it out um, to make sure I wasn't just, you know, misdiagnosing the machine initially. But yeah, with that all done, um, it's time to put the lid on and um, give the machine a light cleaning. I'm not going to do a full restore on it, but it's just been sitting on the floor, so I'll give it a good cleaning. and end up leaving quite a bit of mess on my desk but yeah it's all done looking good and um, yeah here's the first full power on um, I'm actually really happy that the machine worked after all that time it did take me a few hours to do all those capacitors um, and that was a bit of a gamble so here we go the machine's got some games and software and things installed onto it I found a nifty wallpaper from Vogons so that went on there um, and what we'll do first is a couple of benchmarks uh, because I've got a uh, another video card I want to try out in it but yeah what we'll do is we'll run this um, and we'll look at the scores and compare the performance of both cards. Okay 1958 points um, we've got a Reva TNT2 64 um, so we're gonna try that out but yeah um, I wasn't expecting well I didn't know what to expect but yeah we got a bit of a slower speed at 1757 points so I think what I'll do is I'll leave the old card in um, right we'll try out some games and um, 
see what they look like and how they run and um, I've just sort of got a mixture of them so yeah we'll start with Quake 3. I forgot to um, turn on the FPS frap software, so what I'll do is we'll run a uh, inbuilt um, time demo to see uh, what sort of FPS we're getting. We got 37.2 FPS, not too bad, it's still playable, um, most of the games I tested at 800 by 600 at 16 colours or 640 by 480. Um, I thought I'd be cheeky and try Battlefield 1942. Um, this game though needs 32 megabytes of video memory and I don't have that, um, so this is what happens is it turns out when you don't have enough um, video memory it doesn't load textures uh, so yeah anyway I'll try and fly a plane and just um, see how it goes but um, yeah we're getting below 10 FPS so not good Alright, so next we'll try out some GTA 3, um, seems to be a favourite of mine at the moment. Um, I lowered everything down to sort of like the lowest settings, um, you know, lowest resolution, uh, and tried to tweak a few settings, and you know it's bad when you're getting below 30 FPS in the um, opening scene here. Um, yeah, even though the frame limit is on, so it'll limit it to 30 FPS, it's struggled to get to 30. Um, it's quite interesting actually with this one because it's slow, but unlike my other machines where it stutters uh, when you hit things, uh, this one doesn't. So it's definitely um, video card limited, it's not physics limited um, from the CPU or anything, so when I hit these boxes and things, um, and, and turn the car and like the general physics and handling is just slow in general but it's not jumpy um, so yeah a bit of video card would have helped I tried Crazy Taxi which um, uh, had a few issues um, I tried to configure some controls and then it locked up and then it caused my computer to blue screen uh, but eventually I got it to work and of course I forgot to turn off the in-game music, so I'll probably have to talk over this so I don't get like pinged by the big bosses. Um, but yeah, it ran alright. Uh, the game uh, is terrible on the PC, um, so the FPS isn't going to help that. Um, it actually needed um, system requirements state 32 megabytes of video memory, so we've only got 16, but it still uh, worked, which was quite surprising, so... It must be just that power of the Pentium 4, um, 1.60 gigahertz I guess is enough to help overcome a bit of that. Uh, still choppy, um, I'd say it's probably operating around 15-20 FPS but um, yeah it still runs and I just wanted to try a game that was just sort of uh, a little bit different than the normal ones that I play so yeah it's actually the first time I think I've 
actually run this i found it at a thrift store like two years ago and i've never played it because it's yeah it's crazy taxi uh serious sam uh, another good game um it operates around 20 to 30 fps depending on where you are uh, a little bit juddery makes it a bit hard to aim but yeah otherwise is um still pretty playable Moving on because I almost got stuck playing Serious Sam for quite a bit of time. Um, we're going to just try some Half-Life Blue Shift. Um, thankfully this game is, well the system requirements aren't that that high. Um, so we're getting 30, you know, touching 45 FPS uh, now and then. Um, it's definitely playable, it's not, you know, smooth 60 FPS or anything like that, but I'd say a game with a bit of video card um, definitely would help. Uh, running it at 800 by 600 resolution using the OpenGL driver. So moving on to some DOS games, or mostly DOS, I uh, just wanted to hear what the sound was like. So um, we're just going to try out some Doom um, and Duke Nukem 3D. Um, and if some of the other games, I couldn't get the sound to work, but this does have sound blast emulation. So yeah, compatibility is all right. Um, I need to change some of the I.O. addressing for Commander King.
Okay, those alien bastards are gonna pay for shooting up my ride. Okay, and well lastly, um, the two games I wanted to try out was the Smario clone. Um, the sound card doesn't have the option to route the PC speaker through to the audio output, um, which is a bit annoying. I mean, this game doesn't have, um, you know, like a sound blaster support or any music or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it'd be nice to have the internal PC speaker route out the audio ports so you can, you know, capture the audio. Um, so I had to turn that off, uh, but that's okay, um, the game still plays just fine, um, I didn't see any weird screen tearing issues or anything like that. Uh, Commander Keen 6, the shareware version, I always have trouble mapping for some reason the, the keys, I can't get the keys to work and therefore like shooting and jumping are all messed up. Um, so it's pretty annoying, so if anyone knows anything about that just um, let me know. But um, it's a little slow to load because I'm loading it directly off a floppy disk. I have my set blaster variable set, um, but I still couldn't get any sound. Uh, I think with a bit more time I probably could have got it to work, but um, this sound chip by Soundmax does have sound blast emulation. Um, so yeah, I'll have to look into why um, it's not working, but yeah, Duke Nukem it worked fine, and that's more of, that's a DOS version, that one, so, anyway, um, otherwise the game works fine with no tearing, which can be a problem with some of these Apogee games with the side-scrolling, you get weird screen tearing, uh, generally with Nvidia cards I haven't actually seen much of that, it's more like Matrox and um, some ATI cards. Well that wraps it up, um, here's all my old dead capacitors that I ended up switching out. Um, I'm actually really surprised this is the first time I've brought a machine back from the dead completely um, by recapping it, so i um, pretty happy with myself and um, the repair, it's actually the quality of it is pretty good, I used good caps and yeah, it didn't do too much of a bad job, but yeah, other than that, another one saved from landfill, um, but yeah. Thanks for watching and hope everyone enjoyed and um, until next time more projects coming up but yeah another one saved from the uh, landfill. Alright thanks for watching. <laughs>